Hello everyone, it's Mr. Harland again. Ah. Today, for second, yes, for the second video of today. Ooh. Today we will be talking about Gamaliel Razzi. Let's get to that lovely intro sound. Shall we? Oh, In today's video, we must find a tree first. Ah, a nice, lovely tree for this lovely nature of you. Yes, this is beautiful. A view of the countryside with a, a small little pond or lake, whatever you wish to call it, although lakes are bigger. Today, we will be talking about Gamaliel Razzi. It is unknown when he was born, but it is known he died in 1605. He was an English highwayman of the early 17th century. Not much is known about his life, but there is enough to be known. He was the son of Richard Razzi, a well-to-do inhabitant of Market Deeping, Lincolnshire, who took to evil courses as a boy. In 1600 he enlisted in the army which accompanied Sir Charles Blount, afterwards Earl of Devonshire, to Ireland where the Earl of Essex as Lord Lieutenant of Ireland was attempting to put down a rebellion. On returning to England about 1603, Ratsy robbed the landlady of an inn at Spalding of 40 pounds and when arrested he escaped from prison and stealing a horse from a serving man on the road. Later he entered into a partnership in Northamptonshire with two reckless thieves named respectively George Snell and Henry Short Hose. Ratsy's exploits on the highway which were thence, thenceforth notorious were equally characterized by daring and rough humor. Once on one, on one occasion, he robbed two wool merchants and knighted them and, uh, by the roadside as Sir Walter Woolsack and Sir Samuel Sheepskin. Isn't that just lovely names? But uh, could have come up with something better. But eh, these are criminals we're talking about. They never come up with good names. Like the big eared burglar. Eh, Jesus. He usually wore a mask in which the features were made hideously repulsive. Gabriel Harvey referred to him as Gamilly Hobgoblin, which is where the idea of Marvel's Hobgoblin perhaps came from, specifically that name. 
Ben Johnson wrote in the in his Alchemist Act One, Scene One of a face cut worse than Gamili Razzi's in Hay for Honesty in 1651, assigned to Thomas Randolph, an ugly woman is similarly described. On one occasion, Razzi and his friends successfully robbed a large company of nine travelers before he relieved a Cambridge scholar of his property. He extorted a learned oration from him to the poor. He showed a generosity that accorded with the best traditions of his profession. But within two years, his partners betrayed him to the officers of the law and was hanged at Bedford on March the 26, 1605. He is the hero of several ballads, none of which is known, and two of two pamphlets specifically, each of which is believed to be extant in a unique copy which is in the Malone collection at the Bodleian Library was licensed for the press to John Trundle on May 2nd, 1605. This copy has no title, but it is described to the stationer's register as the life and death of Gamaliel Ratsy, a famous thief of England, executed at Bedford on the 26th of March, last past. A portrait of Ratsy, which is no longer accessible, is said to have formed the front frontispice, whatever that is. I can't even think of that word. Some odd things I see and try to pronounce are just butchered, sadly. A poem in Spenserin stanzas headed Orazzi's Repentance, which he wrote with his own hand when he was in Newgate, concludes the tract, and with some vagueness, but with much po poetical fever, relates his adventurous life. The popularity of this volume led another publisher, publisher, Valentine Sims, to obtain on May 31st a license for a second part, which he christened Ratsy's Ghost, or the second part of his Maddie Pranks and Robberies. It is a collection of imaginary adventures on the road, and the only known copy is the John Ryland is in the John Rylands Library at Manchester. The most interesting chapter reports a speech which it is pretended Razzi addressed to the leader of an internerent company of actors who played before him at a country inn. The speaker advises the actor to perform in London, but as soon as he has secured a con competency to buy some place of lordship in the country and seek dignity and reputation, the actor promises to follow the advice, which is presumed to be an ironical reflection on William Shakespeare and the position he gained at Stratford on Avon. In children's literature, there's only uh, one known book made in 1998. He is a secondary character with Mole Cut Purse in Anthony Harowitz's young adult novel. The Devil and His Boy. That is pretty much that's all known about him. And uh, that will be it for today's second video. I hope you liked it. And all I have to say is be feel free, if you love my content, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. We thank you, well I thank you for watching today, and as one YouTuber put it, we shall do this again, we shall do this very soon again, my friends. Thank you for watching, and in October, let's go blue.
goodbye, everyone.